Disclaimer, this podcast features explicit language and discussions sexual in nature. It may contain subjects uncomfortable to some. Please understand that the opinions shared on this podcast are not a representation of any organization or employer the host may be a part of. Hi, we're on Natural to Some. Welcome back. We have time. We're going to you know, very briefly go over like 30 something flags or something. Just really briefly. Very briefly. It's going to be a long episode. You know what really bothers me? What What really grinds your gears? Talking about grinding gears is that there's 10 (laughs) Fast and the Furious movies. This is a very valid point. Like, stop. But they're all like. I mean, yeah. They're dumb. No, they're all household family movies. They're all family movies. Mm. Or at least that's how they advertise them. At seven, I was like, this is getting a little ridiculous. Once they lost Brian, I was like, okay, we're, we're done, right? Yeah. That's um, Paul Walker. Got it. Okay. Just making sure. Yeah, um, I think after five, they went full crazy. Yeah, like robbing stuff and like doing all kinds of like crazy action stuff. They're and in it- outer space in a Fiero. We're in outer space! Told you numbers don't lie. Why haven't they done Transformers crossovers yet? <laughs> like the racing Transformers? Think about it. So much other things to be upset about. Family. It's <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Why is there... And then also, I saw that they were doing a live action Moana. Did I say that right? Moana? Moana? Mo- Mulana? Moana? Moana? Oh, is that the um the one with The Rock? Yeah, they're doing a live action one with The Rock in it. And oh. I feel like the movie's like five years old. There's so much more things to be upset about. Like multiple series movies that don't need more than two versions of the movie. Yeah. TV shows like Game of Thrones disappointing us with the ending of it. Still disappointed. You're, you're, I mean, honestly, going back and watching Game of Thrones, like, Do I Do not think, try to justify the way it ended. No, I'm, I'm not at all. Okay. But I, but I will say that, like, there was a <laughs> lot more people that watched it season to season. There was so much hype for the letdown. People that watch Game of Thrones today... That just like sit down and watch it. They're like, yeah, cool, whatever. I got my dragon and undead fix for a little bit. But yeah, like. But yeah, oh yeah, no, th- that last season. Uh, yeah. That's what happens when you try to rush the ending of a series so you can go work on Star Wars. Yeah, they really wanted to work on Star Wars. Which never happened because you ruined Game of Thrones. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. That's kind of ironic, right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, um freaking that was disappointing. What was disapp- what what, what were ended. you so di- why are you so disappointed all the time, Jenny? You know, honestly, I've been feeling a lot of disappointment, especially with like how the country has been going lately with political environment and all that stuff. Feels like it's been to not to be, you know, a Debbie Downer or anything, but it's been a really dark time for. But I mean, contrast that to our real life experience. Like, yeah. Like, like we just went to an event where everyone was, was cool. happy and having a good time and celebrating being themselves. Yeah. yeah. Like, a lot of this <sighs> negativity that we see, it's in the digital realm our day-to-day lives we don't really deal with too much of it but but the knowledge of its existence does have a little bit of influence on our happiness i think you know knowing that there's hatred like that out there in the world like i hate being in a place where i see people like making assumptions about trans people and I myself and trans transgender. And I went through this very deep 
emotional process of uh, ridding myself of my manhood. And I literally tried so hard to become a man. So it's like, it's like no one, these people that are arguing against for us or anything, a lot of them aren't transgender and they have no, they have no input. Like, they don't interact with trans people as often and they sh shouldn't have a place to say because it's a hard, like, a lot of us don't want to talk about it because it's so goddamn hard. It's so f***ing hard. It's a process. It's a life-changing process. And then you have to try to justify and explain yourself to someone who's automatically assumed that you're crazy. Over. So y you're you're kind of going into that situation like uphill. <laughs> yeah. Not a fun place to be. But we will talk about flags soon, we promise. I mean, the trans flag is part of it. It's behind me. Flags. Oh, that's what that is. Yeah, I saw them last week. I I didn't even didn't even face me. The one on the right's the trans flag, right? Uh, no, that's the uh, <laughs> the fancy one with the purple. Mm. So the one on the right is for uh, that's like the Washington flag, right? Yes, that's the um. I don't know. I don't have anything stupid <laughs> to say to that. Uh, I'm just kidding, but there are a lot of flags out there. And I think we're about to dive into it. So many flags. So many flags. A lot of flags. There's a plethora of flags. I a don't plethora. Know. A plethora? There's a pathogen of flags. There's a... I, like it. I don't no. even know if that's the right word, but I like it. <laughs> it's definitely not. It's not the right <laughs> There's a pathogen <laughs> of flags. There's a flamboyance of flags. There's an inflammatory of flags. We are going to break down a little bit of what these flags mean, who's flying them, and, yeah, some history maybe on the first Pride flag ever created. Yeah. yeah, you ever go to, you know, these events, and you're like, oh, I recognize that flag. Oh, I, ooh, what's that one? What does that mean? Mm, yeah. Oh, what's – there's so many flags. Yeah, like I always get, like, Texas and Chile mixed up. Their flags are very similar. I mean, you d actually do have a very good point. They do have oh, very yeah. similar What flags. is it? Uh, isn't like France is like a color away from Italy or Not Italy. <sighs> which one is it? There's 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 oh. a few flags over there. There's like literally just one's a different shade. Editing magic. <sighs> See, this is a graphic. This is an example of what I was talking about. See, I. See, right, because right now I'm, I don't know right now, but later I will know, and I can put those flags in this general area. I'm not gonna do that. Yes, yeah. yes, Look she that. is. She is gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> one is Texas, one is Chile. Wow. And that's, and if you They're combine literally them, the same so thing. if you combine them both, you get Texas Chile, <laughs> which is <laughs> actually delicious. <laughs> it has Fritos in it. They do make good chili out there. They really do. <laughs> flags. Um, flags. We wanted to talk about. Yeah, like actually, just it just a like only thirty, right? There, there's a handful. So we're not going to get into every flag, but we're going to try to cover like the main ones. Yeah, and actually, didn't okay. you f source your information from the human rights campaign page? Yes. Nice. Yep. Nice. Yes. Hopefully they're updated on it. If they're not, you know, uh, judge us in the comments yep. down below. All right. So we're going to jump right into it. Uh, first up is Brock. Brock is the Pokemon gym leader for the rock type. Yeah. His main go-to Pokemon, I think, is Onyx. Yes. And then sometimes he uses Geodude. And then for some reason has a Vulpix. Oh, you have uh, Machomp too, right? Doesn't he have Machomp? Mm. He's like that the, one's boring. Like the boxer. That's just a humanoid Pokemon. Yeah. It's dumb. Awesome. 
That's just a Pokemon you All show right. if you're wanting to flex. All right, so jumping right into it. First up, we have the Gilbert Baker Pride Flag. Gilbert. This is the original Pride Flag that was created in 1978 after activist Harvey Milk asked Gilbert Baker the design a symbol of gay pride. Each color represents a different part of LGBTQ+. Uh, For instance, the hot pink represents sex. The red symbolizes life. Orange stands for healing. Yellow equals sunlight. Green stands for nature. Turquoise symbolizes magic. Magic? Well, magic and art. Uh. Indigo represents serenity, while violet symbolizes the spirit of LGBTQ+. Harvey Milk, who is that? So, there's a movie on him called Milk. It's starring the dairy product, Milk. Oh. So, who is Harvey Milk? He was... Definitely a person. He was a person on planet Earth 22. He was in politics. (laughs) Yes. He he was in the military for a little bit. Um, He got... Discharged from the military for having a relationship with a man. He he was gay. Oh, okay. He ran, um, I believe, in San Francisco. Um, oh, is he like the first openly gay politician? Yes. What's interesting is 1978, he reached out to the artist to have the pride flag designed. That same year, he was actually assassinated. Wow. Holy shit. By a conservative um, political party member, I think. Of course. Um, which actually led to some riots. Uh, there's actually a very crazy kind of court system there. Uh, his legal defense was that he was depressed. Um, I believe they used what would later become the, quote, Twinkie defense. Essentially that he ate too much junk food and couldn't think properly. And then assassinated somebody, uh, so that actually dropped the charges down to I what? Believe Wait a second! You cannot just tell me that <laughs> you cannot just drop on me that that was a, a a legal defense that what? Yeah, insane. Anyways, moving on to the next flag. Next, we have the traditional pride flag. After the assass- assassination of Harvey Milk the rainbow flag was in high demand. However, due to manufacturing issues, the hot pink stripe was removed. What? Yeah. Uh, The turquoise stripe was also removed from the flag as a design choice from Baker himself. Um, The six-color pride flag has uh, represented the community for over 40 years now. Wow. It is still known today as one of the most common and popular pride flags. Wow. That oh, okay, so that that explains why it doesn't have the full rainbow in there. Yeah. And it was re- literally, well, what did hot pink mean again? It wasn't it um <clears throat> and it had nothing to do with symbology. They just didn't have pink at the time and yeah. then and he yeah. thought it looked weird with the purple without the pink, so. so yeah. And it just Became more popular. It was actually like a manufacturing thing, not like a whoops. Yeah, <laughs> like a whoops. Yeah, and it closer. just happened to be more popular. Yeah. yeah. I feel like if it, I don't know, I, th- I would have liked it either way. I don't know. I, I really like rainbows. the, I really like the unity flag. Oh, yeah, the unity flag is, I like that. It's pretty. So it's same history behind that flag, just manufacturing error. Oopsie. Yep. All right, so next up, we have the Philadelphia Pride flag, which was unveiled in the city of Philadelphia in 2017. Uh, The city actually commissioned the creation of this flag as they wanted to incorporate queer communities of color that have often been overlooked. Wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, interesting. I was reading about the Philadelphia Pride flag, and at the time, there was a lot of uh 
I guess, exposure of racism within the gay community. So they started adding, you know, the black and brown stripe on there to be like, look, we are inclusive of that community. Yes. So just look that up. So next we have the progress pride flag. The progress pride flag evolved from the Philadelphia pride flag and was created by Daniel Radcliffe Quasar Quasar added a white, pink and light blue stripe to represent the trans community. Woo. While the black and brown stripes still represented communities of color, the Black Stripe is also a nod to the thousands of individuals that the community lost during the AIDS slash HIV crisis in the 1980s and the 1990s. Since its creation, the flag has become very popular. This is the flag that I actually have at my house. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's a, it's kind of like the uh, more modern one. Yeah. I guess. I mean, I still see the... I still see the... Uh, uh, the Baker flag as mm. I still see that as you know my pride flag too. Yeah, but it's nice to see your you know the trans colors on there because especially nowadays like we need to be f- waving them trans flags out there because people are are being strong in their hate and we need to be strong in our love for them and everyone because I love everything. I also love lamp. You lo- lamp? I love lamp. Do you really love the lamp, or are you just saying it because you saw it? Yeah, I love lamp. Next, we have the intersex inclusive progress pride flag. The intersex inclusive progress pride flag adds the intersex community to the progress pride flag, hence the name. With this update coming in 2021, this serves as the most up-to-date LGBTQ plus flag. This flag was created by Valentino Bichetti. Yes. Who is of the Intersex Equality Rights UK. Nice. Interesting. And that's the most up-to-date um, official pride flag right now, right? Is that what they're saying? According to the human rights campaign, that is supposed to be like the flag that symbolizes everyone. Okay. okay. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. According to the Human Rights Campaign page. So, like I said, if it's not updated, our information is not updated. Correct. Correct. <laughs> cool. More people. Bigger party. We're just going to move right on to the queer pride flag. While this flag was not as well known, the queer pride flag was created in 2015. The flag represents all aspect all aspects of queerness as the label, quote, queer, has become more celebrated. The pink and the blue shades represents the same gender attraction, while the orange and green stripes stand for non-binary and gender non-conforming. The black and the white stripe symbolizes asexual, aromantic, and the agender community. Wow. Wow. So they cover all the, they cover all of it now. Yep. As it should. Everybody. Everyone. Everybody that's, you know, overlooked in our community. Makes sense. So if you're seeing any of these kind of flags out there, you now you know. Now you know. Now you know. Some history on them. On those ones. Next, we have the lesbian pride flag. While there has been many iterations of the lesbian pride flag, this has been in use since 2018. Since then, it has been the most widely accepted lesbian pride flag. The different shades of red, pink, and orange represent the different types of femininity and lesbian community. Oh. Makes sense. Yeah. It looks like you want us to talk about lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want us to talk about lesbians, Jay? I mean, we are technically in a lesbian relationship. <clears throat> I mean, we are. You want to talk about it? Well, we're most... I mean, I'm not a lesbian. I'm a bisexual. I'm a bisexual. I'm one of them 
bisexuals that they talk about? I'm a bi. I'm a I'm a bicycle bisexual. What does that mean? I don't know. I just said that. I just wanted to say. Is it. that is that know? like Queen? Like I want to ride my bicycle. Does that mean people on a monocycle <laughs> are are unicycle or monosexual? Wait, was are that they queen? unisexual? It's Queen. I love that. I love that. If you're into unicycles, does that make you unisexual? Not to be confused with being bike curious. That's different. That's a butters thing. Who is this little? F I'm not a f yet, sir. But uh, but I am bike curious. I've been bike curious for a while. Have you? Yeah. What was your first bike curious experience? Next, we have the trans inclusive gay men's pride flag. That one. This is the second version of the gay men's pride flag. The original had green, blue, and white. This version actually has a different shade of green and blue to include non cisgender gay men. Nice. Up next, we have the bisexual pride flag. The bisexual pride flag was created in 1998 by Michael Page to bring awareness to the bisexual community. The pink represents the bisexual's attraction to the same gender, while the blue represents the attraction to the opposite gender. The purple stripe in the middle represents the attraction of the two genders. This, pla this flag is on display behind us. Mm -hmm. The pansexual pride flag was created around 2010 in order to bring awareness to the community. Pansexual people are those who have the potential for emotional, romantic, or sexual attraction to people of any gender, though not necessarily at the same time, in the same way, or to the same degree. The pink stripe represents attraction to women, while the blue stripe represents attraction to men. The yellow stripe is for everyone else in between and beyond the gender binary. I've met a quite a few pansexual people, and uh, dang, they just love to party. No, they're, they're just normal like any other people out there. They love to bake. Yeah, actually. But you know what's funny is that they don't use pants. They use pots. To bake? Yes. Oh, she's... They're getting baked. Oh. Next up, we have the asexual pride flag. The asexual pride flag was created in 2010 following a contest by the Asexual Visibility and Education Network. Asexual individuals were people that do not have a sexual attraction to any gender. Each stripe has a different meaning. Black represents asexuality. Gray means gray asexuality and demisexuality. White stands for non-asexual partners and allies. And the purple represents community. So, just so you know about that. Have you met anyone that's <coughs> yeah. asexual? Yeah, I know a few people that are asexual. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I, I knew a few people that were actually, like, uh, they weren't comfortable coming out. Like, they were, um, their parents were actually kind of judgmental about it, I guess. Really? Yeah. Being asexual? Yeah. Like, That's like, weird. So. I feel like, if anything, people would be happy. You're like, oh, you're not having sex. Great. You'd be surprised people being upset about what you're doing with, you know, your sex parts. Yeah. Like, if you're not using them enough, <laughs> if you're using them too much, you know, people it has to be the right amount. You know, it's that. Uh, people are very passionate about their genitalia. It's that Goldilocks. And what you're using about it. What are you using it with for? Yeah. And who with? Actually, uh, I knew a girl in college she was asexual and it turned out to be kind of a big deal between her and her boyfriend because her boyfriend wanted oh wow yeah to have a lot of sex and she was more so not on the romantic side yeah. yeah you said that girl you follow is also asexual right yeah i believe um evie lupine is asexual as well okay nice yeah. be sure to look her up she uh Yes. It's a great source for BDSM and kink knowledge. Yep. So next up, we have the demisexual pride flag. It is unknown when the demi... Oh, crap. Okay. 
Ooh, next, next mystery <laughs> behind the yeah. demisexual flag. I like a good. Okay. It's unknown. Move on. Huh? <laughs> next flag. <laughs> next flag. <All> right. <laughs> we don't know. Next up. The next flag we have up is the demisexual pride flag. It is unknown when the demisexual pride flag was created, but it represents people who only form sexual attraction for people once they have established a deep emotional co connection with them. Each color has a different meaning. Black represents asexuality. Gray stands for demisexuality. White means sexuality, while purple represents the community as a whole. I see that, I see that as a common thing as in a lot of these flags is purple represents community. But every every color has a different meaning. For well, yeah, you gotta flags. you gotta think about the allies. Think yeah. about the allies. Gotta think about the allies. Think about the allies. If it weren't for the yeah. allies, it'd be sure fucking hard to fight this fight all by ourselves. You know, it's important that those people stand by us. That I agree. You know, like Jay here. Stand by me. Well, he's got he and he has his own things to be proud of as well. Which, if it's not in here, we'll go over the BDSM pride flag as well. I think yeah. it's in here. It, it isn't. So next up, we have the polyamory pride flag. The polyamory pride flag was created by Jim Evans in 1995 for all polyamorous people. Each color represents a different aspect of polyamory. Blue stands for openness and honesty of everyone involved. Red represents love and passion. Well, black stands for solidarity with those who must hide their polyamorous relationships. The pi sign in the middle signifies the infinite options of partners available to polyamorous people. How do you feel about that, babe? We have our own flag. I didn't actually know that. My favorite part is that it includes pie. <laughs> I do like pie. Everybody wants a slice of that poly lifestyle. Everyone wants a slice of my cherry pie. That's slang for um slang for nothing. I like I make a really good cherry pie. Fruit. Fruit ass. Fruit ass. Fruity ass. Wow. We they only have a color that represents everything that our relationship is based on and why it succeeds as a polyamorous relationship. Openness, honesty, <laughs> passion, <love>. and <laughs> pie, <laughs> and math, and math. I mean, well, most things have to be built on a foundation of math. True, very true. Speaking from an engineering standpoint, as Jay likes to say, uh, math is, finish the quote. So next up, we have the polysexual pride flag. The polysexual pride flag was created online in 2012 for people that are attracted to multiple yet not all genders. The blue stripe means attraction to men. Pink stands for attraction to women, while green is for attraction to those outside of the binary. Okay. So polysexual. Interesting. Not to be confused with polyamory. There's yeah. There are polyamorous polysexuals out there, but there are not polygons. Next up, we have the transgender pride flag. The transgender pride flag was debuted at Phoenix Pride in 2000 and was created by U.S. Navy veteran Monica Helms. She created the flag as a symbol of both the diversity. Wow. She created the flag as a symbol of both the diversity of the trans community and the rights that trans folks are fighting for today, which is actively happening right now. The blue stripes represent the traditional boy colors while the pink stripes represent the traditional girl colors. The white stripe represents those who are intersex, transitioning, or have an undefined gender. So that's a, that's a trans flag for you. I actually did not know what the meaning of the white stripe was. So, I mean, that's that's literally, it's should be more of like an egg white. <laughs> an egg white. You know what I mean? For all those eggs. Right. So I don't get the egg oh, thing. So oh, so you don't okay. know. So yeah. a, an egg is someone that ha it, it's like they're in the trans closet. Oh, okay. Like they haven't come out yet. Or they haven't hatched yet. They haven't hatched yet. Into a beautiful trans butterfly. Sometimes you can detect Wait. eggs before they know that they're eggs. Would that make them? Chickens. We're chickens. No, I like it more like 
they're cocoons. They're caterpillars writing to cocoon. Caterpillars don't hatch out of eggs. Yeah, but they hatch out of cocoons. A cocoon's not an egg. Could see, you imagine if no, you no, tran- imagine if you had to open up a cocoon to make I breakfast? My, That'd be I, so gross. I see my transition oh. as like as like turning into a butterfly. I was an ugly caterpillar, and then I had to close up and work on myself, and that's when I cocooned. And then when I sprouted out the other end as me, I was a beautiful butterfly. And then I face hugged you, and I made more of me. Whoa. She face hugged me. Yeah. She's a face hugger. So. <laughs> yeah, trans flag. Yeah. Trans flag. Um, you might know this flag because uh, I don't know if anybody told you this, Jenny, but you're trans. <gasps> this goes back to what you're saying, that often you can tell when an egg is an egg before they know that they're an egg. Right. See, I only I had to explain to Jenny like a year ago she was trans. She didn't really. Feel I didn't know. I've yeah. been. This was after she got breast implants. She yeah, didn't know. yeah. I was just like I was. I was perfectly fine being a dude with breast implants. Yeah, it's like this is fucking weird. And then she was like, "No, honey, you're trans." I was like, "Oh, I thought I was a man with breasts." <laughs> <laughs> I love that you can say that with a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Anyway. Moving on. Moving on. Up next, we have the non-binary pride flag. The non-binary pride flag was created in 2014 to represent those individuals who do not identify with either binary gender or within the binary at all. The yellow stripe represents a gender outside of the binary. The white stripe stands for those who have multiple or all genders. The purple stripe symbolizes those who fall between the male slash female binary. The black stripe represents those with no gender. And that's a little bit about the non-binary flag. I actually dated someone that was non-binary. And I've met a lot of people that are non-binary. Same. Sweet people. And I feel like, if anything, like, like I feel like in the future, that's where, like, gender is going to go. It's like, it's not like it doesn't matter what you're wearing it doesn't matter how you represent yourself female male whatever no one cares anymore it's Mm -hmm. just they see a person they see a a being uh, like an individual person it's no longer you know see a human yeah they just see a human and they want to get to know you they don't go oh you're you're a boy oh Oh, tell me tell me about all the male things that you need to do yeah tell me about (laughs) and i i don't understand why people get so uncomfortable about non-binary people it's because they can't accept change i think what do you think i think it's just something they don't understand so they just demonize it yeah damn that's against (laughs) god that's a little that's a little bit into the truth though yeah i mean yeah I mean, a lot of people use religion as a veil for their hatred. So up next, we have the intersex pride flag. The intersex pride flag was developed in 2013 by the co-chair of Intersex Human Rights Australia, Morgan Carpenter. Intersex people are those born with a variety of differences in their sex traits and reproductive anatomy. There is no one way to be intersex as everyone's experience is unique. The creator chose yellow and purple as those are seen as gender neutral colors. So... Cool. I didn't know purple was seen as a gender neutral color. I knew yellow was just because a lot of, yep. you know, whenever you're, uh, whenever someone's having a baby, they'll be like, oh, let's just paint it yellow just in case, Babe, you know, because we don't, what? Prince wore purple. Yeah. True. Very gender neutral person. Prince. Yeah. Prince. Prince. Mm. There's lavender's purple. I like the color purple. That's my color. Are you gender neutral? No, no, I just love I purple. <laughs> Your color is royal purple, though. Yeah, she just likes purple. I like royal purple. Yeah, I mean, I like all it's purples. Gotta be royal. Purple. I'll take any purple over no purple. But if I have, if I have, you know, Wait, first dibs on a purple, you'll take royal p- or some purple over a nurple. What? Nurple. Nurple. What's a nurple? Purple nurple? A purple nipple. But why is it? 
Nurple? Why do they say a purple nurple? You know, yeah. I, I don't remember. Why don't they just call it a purple nipple? That's what happens when you twist it. No, they, because when it's done, it looks like a nurple. Cause it, well, you, it's a nurple. <laughs> well, because you fucked it up. Like, it doesn't look like a nipple anymore. It looks more like a nurple. Oh, jeez. Gonna have to look it up. Right? I watch, watch me be right. That's got to be it. Purple. It just Urkel. doesn't look like a nipple anymore. Purple Urkel. Purple Durple. So, purple nurple, Ooh. another word for purple nurple is nipple crimple. Nipple dimple? Nipple crimple. Crimple my nipples. Up next, we have the gender fluid pride flag. The gender fluid pride flag was developed in 2013 by J.J. Poole to give space to those whose gender identity and or gender expression fluctuates during different times and different circumstances. Each color represents a different aspect of the gender fluid community. Pink stands for femininity, while blue stands for masculinity. White represents the lack of gender, while black symbolizes all genders. Um, The purple stripe represents a combination of masculinity and femininity. Just so you know. Purple. Which... That kind of makes sense because, like, blue and pink kind of makes purple, I guess. No. It doesn't? No. So. Blue and red. No. Something that is fascinating. <gasps> what's oh, fasc- my God. That's fascinating. Let's hear what's fascinating. Oh, my God. I can't believe you're bringing this up. Is. Nurple <laughs> is actually. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's actually just a combination of nipple and purple. Nurple. Oh, okay. Purple nurple. Yeah, purple nipple. Purple nipple. <clears throat> yeah. Which has nothing to do with the flag, but I, I know that a lot of you have gotten purple nurples back I've, in the day. I so. was paying attention. I was paying attention. <laughs> Next up, we have the gender queer pride flag. The gender queer pride flag was created by Marilyn Roxy in 2011 to represent those people that reject the static categories of gender. Gender queer people may see themselves as both or neither male and female or beyond the binary. The lavender stripe represents androgyny and other queer identities, while the white stripe stands for agender people. The green stripe symbolizes those who fall outside of the binary. Hmm. Yeah. And that also... Brings us to the agender pride flag. The agender pride flag was created in 2014 to represent those who have had an unidentifiable gender, are gender neutral, or have no gender at all. The black and white stripes represent the absence of gender, while the gray stripes stand for semi-genderless people. The green stripe represents non-binary people. Representation in colors! And flags. I love it. Now... We have the bi-gender flag. The creation of the bi-gender pride flag is unknown. The flag represents those who have two genders. In some cases, this is both male and female, but can also include non-binary identities. These two gender identities can occur at the same time, or they can vary over time. I feel like we should do, like, like obviously we're not going to go deeper into these flags, but... There is history behind all these flags, and maybe the ones that aren't really talked about as much, maybe we can do a little bit oh, more yeah. research on and talk about more in oh, yeah, later episodes. Oh, yeah, I'm sure each, each one of these flags, there, there's history behind. We're just kind of like briefly, yeah. here, here's what this flag and is, and this is what it looks like. Also, if you're in our Discord and you represent one of these flags that we are maybe putting out false information about or you want to tell us some more about it, be sure to leave a comment in the comments below or join our Discord. And leave a message. Yeah, please share any and all information. Yes. And you can also buy us a coffee on Oh, coffee. my God, stop. So the thing about Brock is that it has nothing to do with him wanting to breed Pokemon. He wants to breed... Women. Women. Yeah, older women. Older women, specifically, yeah. in uniforms. Yeah. Yeah. Why did they make him a Pokemon breeder? I don't know. I thought he was a trainer. He was a, well. He was a gym leader. Yeah. And all then I know, he became a Pokemon breeder. All I know is that everything to do with Brock and Pokemon is very interesting. The Demi Gender Pride Flag. Let's talk about the Demi Gender Pride Flag. The details around the creation of the Demi Gender Pride Flag are also unknown. 
The flag represents those people who have a partial feeling, but not a full connection to a particular gender identity or to the concept of gender. Who's creating these flags? Where Where are they coming from? Like yeah. Where, where are all where, these flags coming from? Where are you finding these flags? Origins unknown. It's not like a mistake serious pokemon in the wild like but i think the human rights campaign they went on google and they're like this is a flag that exists okay all right put it on our page put it on the where page. did it come from i don't know yeah well we'll just say that it's unknown all right next flag it's gonna be a horrible episode what's it gonna be i hope no this it's episode not is it's gonna horrible. be good it's gonna it's be to really edit. funny it's gonna be a f- mm, i hate you guys for how hard <laughs> this is gonna be to edit oh it's so just hard. keep just keep using clips of brock it'll help tie the thing together i'm telling you All right, so the Pride of Africa flag. The Pride of Africa flag debuted at Johannesburg Pride in 2019. It was created by Pride of Africa Foundation. This is the first pan-African LGBTQ plus flag. It is inspired by the flags of all the countries in Africa. Wow. Nice. Fucking awesome. Next, we have the Queer People of Color Pride flag. The queer people of color flag appeared at San Francisco Pride in 2019, but rose to prominence in 2020 during the Black Lives Matter protests. While the designer and original year are unknown, the flag signifies how the struggle for racial equality and queer equality often intersect. It also honors the number of queer people of color that have spent their lives fighting for both queer and racial equality. Fascinating. That is one thing that's, uh, that I think it, they definitely needed a flag because to be black in this country is hard, but to be queer and black is even harder. And lastly, we have the two spirit pride flag. Uh, this is a new flag, um, right? Yes. This one was just recently added. I believe so. Like not too long ago. So it has Native American origin. The two-spirit pride flag represents indigenous Americans that identify as two-spirit individuals, meaning they fall outside of the male-female binary. The feathers represent masculine and feminine identities. The circle signifies the unification of both identities into a separate gender, while the rainbow represents modern queer identities. Wow. Yeah. Nice. So that's uh, a lot of the big ones and new ones that have popped up recently. It's funny that the Two Spirit Pride flag is a newest, newer addition whenever Two Spirit people have been known about in their culture for a very long time before we even came to this country. Well, before yeah, white people yeah. even came here, you know? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, the the term is a lot older than... The flag is. Oh, yeah. We do have one more flag. Ooh, what's the new flag? The leather pride flag. Is it the... Wait, I thought it was the BDSM pride flag. So it's actually known as the leather pride flag. However, it is also known in the BDSM community as a BDSM flag. This oh, is the okay. flag that I do have this flag. Oh, okay. And I do like kind of call it the BDSM flag. But the proper term is the leather pride flag. Huh. Which just means you like leather and wearing leather. So, I mean, like, me, like, specifically, I don't like wearing leather, but I do like leather on other people. Okay. Yeah. Why haven't they have created, like, a separate BDSM flag yet? I think it's because we, we, like, look at the leather flag as the BDSM flag. I mean, that's okay, too. So, if you look at a... Kink.com, their mm-hmm. headquarters, they're flying the leather pride flag out of their headquarters. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, no I mean, if kink, if they're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it, it's the leather pride flag is just kind of, it's commonly accepted as the BDSM flag. Yeah. Okay. No need to, like, create another flag. Why not? Or we could create, like, a latex flag. Ooh, what could we make it out of? I don't know. What kind of material could we make it out of? I would want it to be waterproof, so shiny, shiny. It would have to be shiny, mm-hmm. stretchy. Uh, uh, it doesn't have to be. Stre- it's a flag. It's a flag. 
It just has to be like aerodynamic. It needs to wave in the wind. Leather pride flag, right? What colors are this leather pride flag? What's on it? Oh, describe. So describe. Yeah, describe. It is black, blue, white, and red. The red is in the shape of a heart. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Oh. Some people think of it as like the uh, pro um, police officer flag. <laughs> oh yeah. Because oh yeah, because it looks yeah. close. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody. I think somebody over at my house was like, oh, you have, like, the pro-police flag. And I'm like, oh, shit. That, no, that's You mean the racist is. cop flag. Yeah. That's really all it is. That's it's the racist what, cop flag. That's not what that flag means. That's not what that flag means. Go home and look it up. <laughs> it's like, you're cops. You don't need a brotherhood. You already are a brotherhood. Something that is a fascinating fact here. It was adopted the year I was born. You what? were adopted the year you were born? What do you mean was adopted? The, the flag the flag was adopted. Oh like, nice. Like into the culture the year I was born. Does it know it's adopted? Well, at least its or- origins are not unknown. That's true. Yeah. What do the colors Those poor flags that don't know who their dads are. We didn't go over what what, Our moms. Col- what do the colors mean? Yeah. Yeah, what is it what does it mean? What does your leather flag mean, Jay? So here you go. The red heart is for love. Okay. The white stripe is for purity and an open, honest, and understanding relationship. And the black stripes for leather and the blue ones for denim. They need to make a BDSM flag. Yeah. Denim? Denim. Like jeans. Denim. Denim. They need a BDSM flag. Yeah, they, they need an official BDSM flag. Yeah. We're going to create one. Let's, Let's do it. One. Let's just do it. Let's fucking do it. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Let's just be that the random name in that list of No, I'd rather be thing. Origin Unknown. That sounds that sounds. We mysterious. should do it and then not have any like relation to it, so then it does have Origin Unknown, and they have to search for us through the interwebs. So it was presented in the International Mr. Leather Competition in Chicago in 1989. Mr. Leather. Mr. Leather. Nice. Yeah. Mr. Leather. Mr. Leather. I would love to meet one of these Mr. Leather people. If they you know anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I, they just like they call me Mr. Leather. Oh god, every time I hear the word Mr. Leather, I think of Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Interesting. How does that make you feel? Why does your mind? mind go there? I don't know, but it, for some reason I want to be chased around by a guy, sweaty guy with a chainsaw, maybe have him capture me, tie me up, and hook you to me, the ceiling. Throw me into the back of a truck, hook me to a ceiling and peel my skin off. That's hot. <laughs> oh my god that is like so hot that's like like texas hot that's what happens if you you know present your gender in like texas that's a that's just a that's just a normal normal summer day in texas yeah awesome. texas chainsaw massacre it's in the title yeah hopefully you found this video educational until next time i'm nikki sapphire Stay kinky. I'm Jay Wheeler. It's your girl, Jenny Banks. Sign it off. And now we can talk about... Brock. We Ban- can talk more about Brock. <laughs> banter, so, banter, banter. Fun fact about Brock is that one of his favorite Pokemon is Vulpix, which isn't a rock Pokemon, but it can learn Rock Smash. Does it, is it because Vulpix is so pretty? Well, because he... Well, it's he longs for Ninetales. Right. <laughs> Well, He's trying to get that tail, I, actually baby. Actually, doesn't doesn't his full picks? Uh, yeah. What I find. I thought so.